Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day it is that you're joining us. Uh, this is the Tulsa World Scene podcast, which uh, at the moment we are affectionately calling Fred for no good reason, uh, just to have give him a name so he won't feel lonely. Uh, joining me today are uh, Jimmy Trammell, who uh, came up with the name Fred for Fred, and uh, Grace Wood, who uh, did not object to the <laughs> name being Fred. Um, <laughs> We'll move on from that. Um, we here we are here to talk about all sorts of silly things. Um, this is the week of um, the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl, um, something that I've lived with for a, 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 a couple of weeks because I, I live in the, the the shade of the Golden Driller, and. Um, it's um, it's 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 very much a presence in my life for for, for a number of days. Um, uh, just just the sound of it, uh, the the little cars all all tearing around and turning left, and um, it's uh, it's 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 a it's a thing to hear. Let me tell you. But that got me thinking. You know, Chile. Um, we did a, have a story about <clears throat> the um, the. What I believe is the second oldest restaurant uh, in Tulsa, which is uh, the Coney Island Hot Wiener Shop, now at um, oh, what is it, 107, 107 North Boulder, um, in the in, in the, the shadow Tulsa of Arts Tulsa Theater, right? Or in the shadow of the Tulsa Theater. Um, <laughs> it used to be. It started out right next door to the Tulsa World downtown. Um, and then moved uh, over on Fourth Street, moved across Fourth Street, moved back across Fourth Street, then moved into the the Arts District. But this year, or this Monday, January 9th, was its ninety seventh anniversary, and um, Chile is a, a a major part of of its success, and also the oldest restaurant, not only. In Tulsa, but in the state, is Ike's Chili House, which goes this this year. It's it's coming up to its uh, its one hundred and fifteenth year. So, Chili is a very big part of of, of this city. Apparently, um, are both of you uh, fans of of this particular brew, or or is it something that you that that you tolerate when necessary? Grace is <laughs> nodding and grinning. I think she may be a fan. Yes, I am a chili fan for sure. What about you, Jimmy? I here's <clears throat> I'm gonna go with this in a, in a weird way. Okay, uh, how yes, else would you yeah. go about it? Uh, Bill Haston, the sports writer, was kind enough to accompany me to a comic con in Austin, Texas, one time before a ball game, and we go and eat at a place next door. And Bill said something. Uh, really profound i thought our food was just very plain and he said the reason you go out to eat is because they're going to make you something that better than you could eat at home which i thought, I thought i've never thought about it like that but that's 100 percent true okay and i told that story to get to this i go to ron's hamburgers and i order the frito pie and it's so good there's no way i could duplicate that at home i've tried but I can't make a Frito pie as good as Ron's hamburgers makes at their place. It's just impossible. Mm -hmm. my, my 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 late wife was was that was that was her go to order every time we went was she wanted the the Frito chili pie, and and there is something to be said for that uh, that unique concoction of chili Fritos cheese. Do you add onion? I'll take it. Yeah, onions, okay. cheese, On and onions make a Frito pie, in my opinion. You got to have okay. One. Um, I I, re I remember in 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 the halcyon days of youth, my mother would make what you would call Frito, but it, it was a baked casserole. So mm. the the Fritos lost some of their structural integrity uh, in the course of uh, in the course of, of of the preparation. It was still tasty, but. Um, uh, having a Frito pie where the where the chips were actually still crunchy was something of a revelation to uh, 
to my younger self. And I thought, this is the way to go with this. So. If only Sonic would start serving them in the bag again, Sonic Drive-In. To me, it had a whole different flavor when Sonic served them in the bag and you just eat it right out of the bag. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll go uh, right now if they do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Do they even still offer that anymore? Do they still offer the chili? They have pie? a Frito chili cheese wrap or something, but I don't think they oh. have a Frito pie. Grace, what's your go to for chili? Mm, in Tulsa? Yeah. Um, I've actually never been to Ron's, which is so sad. I really should go. It's only like, a couple blocks away from my new place so i i really should make the trip um but i think for chili in tulsa i really like ike's um it's just a classic i really enjoy their chili mac i know some people like the three-way chili that has like the spaghetti i think that's a little too adventurous for me i don't know about you guys but um yeah i still really like ike's all right well we we, we, we must ask this beans or no beans? Beans. <laughs> I think. Jimmy? I'm fine with the beans, but there's a music artist, and I can't remember remember his name, but that's that's the hill he wants to die on, is if you put beans in chili, it's no longer chili. But I'm bring it, I mean, bring it. I'm good with it. Yeah, I, I believe, I, 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 I've heard it said that when you, when you add beans to chili, it becomes, it stops being chili and it becomes stew. Uh, because you you've introduced a, a a vegetable that is not an onion, um, but uh, I, personally I'm not a fan of you know it, it, it I, chili is going to be meat as far as I am concerned. So um, remember when Wendy's I, first? I, go ahead, go James. On. No, I'm like I remember when Wendy's debuted. Grace doesn't because Grace is uh, not as a senior citizen like you and I. But, <laughs> When uh, when Wendy's debuted, it was basically gourmet hamburgers shaped like a square. Right. Chili. That was that was the menu. Hamburgers, yeah. chili. So, yeah, it was it was. Th 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 those were simpler times. Um, <laughs> but uh, I I have I have I have I have never ordered the chili at Wendy's because at an impressionable age. Um, uh, I heard somebody that worked there described how they make it, and he probably was exaggerating, but still, that was enough to make me go. Oh. No, I think I'll 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 I'll, I'll pass on that. So, <laughs> but um, but uh, are, do, do, do you, well, Jimmy? You said you tried to replicate the Ron's Frito chili pie at at at, at home. Do you make your own chili or? Um, or or, well, or do, do cans come into the come into the play? It, obviously, it's going to be better if you make it at home. You know, there are some uh, canned chili I like, and some I don't. And but anymore, it's been tough to find one that I really uh, dig as far as the can type. Maybe I'm worn out. It's so much better if you do it homemade. Are you are you a homemade chili? Do you make your own chili, uh, Grace? I've never tried. I don't have a crock pot and I feel like that might be like kind of an essential ingredient. But a fun story I was going to tell is that chili actually kind of runs in my family a little bit, I guess you could say, because my great uncle was the founder of Chet's Hot Dogs in Muskogee. Have you guys heard of it? It's no. like Muskogee's answer to Coney Islander. Like they do right. like the little mini chili dogs. So I guess I kind of have chili in my blood in that way, but I've never tried to make it myself. Okay. All right. Well, well, that's that 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 that, that may be that may be a project for 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 this year to learn how to uh, learn how to make how to make chili. We we uh, as I say, we talk about uh, uh, this year being uh, Coney Islanders or Coney Island. Yeah, Coney Island and Coney Islander are two separate entities. Keep that in mind. Uh, the Coney Island Hot Wiener Shop, um, it's 97th uh, anniversary. They're not doing anything special to, to market other than trying to survive. So um, head up town, you know, get three, three, three with everything and, um, and, and, and show some appreciation for uh, a, a true Tulsa original, uh, the Coney Island. Well, um, what have we got uh, coming up for people to read in the Tulsa world that will be available 
at fine newsstands everywhere and online at tulsaworld.com. Uh, Grace, I know that you have been dealing with with uh, uh, maladies, and so I don't know that you've got something uh, this week, but is there something coming up that uh, people should keep an eye out for? Yeah. Um, so next week, I'm writing about the upcoming um, Green Country Home and Garden Show. Um, it's the 20th anniversary show, so that'll be fun. And I'm speaking to a couple different vendors and potentially one of the event sponsors. Um, so that'll be next Saturday in Tulsa World. So what about you, Jimmy? Friday, I've got a preview of comedy shows coming to Tulsa in 2023 uh, and an interview with Sam Morrill, who's uh, coming to Kane's Ballroom on January 20th. Grace, you've heard of Sam? You smile there. Yeah, he's super funny. Yeah. I like him. He is. He's, he's very funny. Uh, and then uh, I, I think we have a new comedy club in Tulsa opening in the spring also. So I'll kind of throw that in there. Uh Someday I've got a story about what if you wrote a song and a guy in the Country Music Hall of Fame liked it and a guy in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, liked this, the song that you wrote and they both wanted to record it and they did and it became a chart hit for both of them. The song is Tulsa Time. It was written 45 years ago in a Tulsa hotel, you know, coincidentally. So I talked to the songwriter, Danny Flowers, about the origins of Tulsa time, and that'll be in Sunday's Tulsa world. All right. Well, great. We will have um, uh, this uh, week, we have a review of uh, 1907 Cantina, which is in Bixby. Um, it is a um, sort of, it's, it's sort of a cross between, uh, well, it's not really a cross. It, 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 it combines barbecued meat and tacos in some unique ways. Um, and it's by the uh, the people that run the 1907 barbecue in Mother Road Market, which was uh, one of the Tulsa World's top 10 new restaurants for last year. So uh, it's got a great pedigree. Uh, it's in the center of downtown uh, Bixby. So, and it's a very atmospheric place. Um, they have a full bar service. They also have a line of uh, non-alcoholic mocktails for uh, those who prefer not to have alcohol. So it's a it's a it's a neat place to check out. And uh, we'll also have an interview uh, Sunday with the writer Brad Meltzer, um, who's known for primarily for his his, his thrillers, but he's started doing uh, a series of uh, nonfiction books. Um, and the third in the series, he's coming to Tulsa January eighteenth is called The Nazi Conspiracy. And it is about an attempt by the Germans during World War II to assassinate the leaders of the United States, England, and Russia when they met for a conference in 1943, for, I think, um, somewhere in there. Uh, so that we'll, we'll have that for, uh, for Sunday. And... Uh, all sorts of myriad other things to uh, keep you informed of what's going on in the world of entertainment and um, the like and here in the Tulsa environment. So uh, we want to thank you all for taking the time to spend with us as we babble on and on and on. And we will gladly see you later. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye.